future. It takes pure human uh, grit and creativity to create a possible future. Phyllis, I, I want you to know how much I appreciate our collaboration and the work we've been doing together on Possible Futures. Uh, but I also know that you've spent a lot of years and you really grew up through the whole media, media world. And uh, one of the things that we haven't discussed is really the role of media in terms of how it's affecting our lives and how it's affecting our relationship with the future. And I'd, I'd really be curious sort of what your overview is with respect to what's going on with the media and how it's affecting our, our future. Well, first of all, Jim, I too have enjoyed our collaboration. It is a pleasure to work with someone who is consciously and actively involved in thinking about our world and sharing ideas. Um, for me, uh, I could tell you all the things wrong with the media, but I want to tell you the primary concern for me is that we have this, this gift, this huge ability to communicate with almost anyone in the world right now. Even with cell phone coverage, the continent of Africa is a now an audience. And yet, media is not stepping up to the challenge or the opportunity. We could be educating everyone easily, sharing the best medical practices, all kinds of ways to be sustainable in our lives. And that is not the focus of mainstream media. Uh, it's nice that we're entertained. I'm not a curmudgeon. I like entertainment. Anybody who knows me knows I'm crazy about The Walking Dead, for example. I love that stuff. But there's also room for uh, a deeper kind of sharing, a sharing of knowledge. When I went to college, the, there was always a feeling that the, the big bodies of information were something you had to earn the right to have access to. You had to get a certain grade point to get a master's degree. And then you had to get a certain level to get a PhD. Now there is a democratization of information. There's no reason to hold back information. Everybody needs to know. Well, I think that's right. I mean, in my experience, it's sort of like, well, primarily through Google and I guess other uh, engines of various sorts and algorithms, is that, that knowledge itself is becoming a commodity. You know, that uh, it's no longer as valuable as it was before it became sort of available to every everybody. So now everybody's got access to everything. And I'm wondering if we're losing some of the, the core distinctions in the world of media. For example, uh, you mentioned the, the spread of information and knowledge, but also there's a distinction, it seems to me, between that entertainment and news. And yet somehow I think sometimes it feels like this is all coming together. Uh, even, even in my world of, of corporate education, uh, people are are rating the, the consultants and re, uh, grading the workshop leaders based on their enjoyment of the process as distinct from necessarily the content or the value of what's trying to be communicated. So it's infotainment, I think, is the current uh, label that people use. I, I can agree with you there, and, on, and I see the dangers of the blending of the news media with the entertainment industry, there's definitely danger there, and people aren't able to discern what is fact and what is fiction. On the other hand, the use of viable ways to entertain people can help perpetrate more solid information. People have so much going on in their lives just to survive, so that if news is delivered in a slightly entertaining way, it may give them a greater chance of grasping and holding on to that. So that both sides of that conversation need to be had. But does, does that mean, though, that the, the production of media content is being shaped by the consumer more and more and more, which I, I, on one level is a good thing, but it's sort of like running the government based on polling. You know, it's, at some point, where is the original distinction of producing something that maybe people don't even know they want? or be able to generate original ideas and original content and have breakthroughs in a particular field if, if, the, if, the, if the accessibility of, of all of the media is driven by the consumption and whether we like it or don't like it. 
I think I share your concern there. I definitely think that in, uh, information based on polls is a dangerous approach, and a lot of the mainstream media guys are doing precisely that. Focus groups and statistics uh, on ratings are the things determining whether we get the information or not. You know, some people even have this old-fashioned idea, if it bleeds, it leads. They won't even give you good news because they know good news is not as sexy as bad news, which is terrible. Yeah. Uh, so, no, we, we, we share the same view there, but I'm talking about um, shows like the old John Stewart show, which suddenly became a great source of information for those people who were kind of bored with what was coming out of uh, the government, so to speak. So I think there's some balance there, but you're right. Original thought, uh, conscious people have to be involved in the delivery, and that's why I work with you and Possible Futures. People ask me, well, why would you work on a show that has a smaller audience? It doesn't matter anymore the size of the audience. It matters whether or not you have a group of constituents who are truly paying attention. You have a large audience in your community. You have a growing audience of intellectuals, thoughtful people, people in business who want to know what you think about, whose ideas are also stimulated by your output. And that's a viable way of approaching media. That's really interesting. I, I, you know, what, you, what you just provoked in my thinking is the idea that traditionally, I think, media has been a one-way pipe, mm. primarily communicating outward to a, to a market of, of consumers. Uh, what I just saw in what you were saying, though, is that maybe uh, the future of media, at least, or, or some aspects of media, has more to do with the dialogue between the producers and the consumers, not from a uh, judging whether I like or don't like it. Uh, one of the things I talk about in my, in, my, in my work sometimes is we all have a little voice in our head that constantly is saying, I agree or I disagree. And then I point out, I said, when you agree, what do you do? Well, you basically say that matches what I believe. And what do you do when you don't agree? Well, mostly I dismiss it. But then I ask the question, have you learned anything either way? And I think to the degree we're relating to the media in a agree, disagree, like, not like kind of way, we're not growing and learning as people. But if I begin to hear what you're saying is that really the possibility of, di of media is to open up two-way channels in which we can begin to interact around our ideas and, and learn to see, to see the world through each other's eyes as a constantly, as opposed to necessarily just simply judging or uh, what we think of, of someone's particular point of view. One of the areas that I am concerned about is the growing gap. Just as we talk about a wealth gap, there is a technology gap. And there are increasing numbers of people who are information have-nots and technology have-nots. And we have to find a way to integrate them into the use of media. So somehow, uh, the fact that we all now own media for our own use, thanks to our iPhones and our other digital phones, uh, is a good thing. But there are still numbers of people, in, in some cases older people, who feel disenfranchised by the development of technology. One of my wishes for this program and for others is that we find a way to include them. And dialogue is one way to do that getting them to interact with you and showing them the ease of how their input gets counted will increase the uses for older people. Older people could even have more opportunities to create and make work for themselves if they could be freed up of the fear of technology. Well, that's, that's very interesting because I think that, that there's a, a two, two ways of looking at that. There's the, the have-nots as in they have not been exposed to it, so whether they're a a tribesman in Africa or whether they're an old person uh, in, a, in a nursing home uh, they don't have uh, they're not aware of the possibilities and so forth but then there's another group of people who have access to that technology if they were interested or if they were open or if they were uh, willing to learn uh, that are simply not willing to learn mm -hmm. in fact they're uh, hard over uh, opposing any media that confronts or argues or, or challenges their particular worldview uh, I, I one time wrote a, a, a blog about the Lebanization of America, uh, where I said that you know the, the big danger I see with the media is that we begin to, to build silos, uh, media, if you will, uh, kind of conclaves in which we only have access to media that we with people that we already agree with. 
So whether you're looking at Fox News as a media channel for conservative people, or you look at CNN or NSBC uh, as, as a NBC as a media for more progressive people, the point is is that we don't have a lot of media that both parties respect and relate to equally, and 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 thereby have a, a vehicle or a forum in which to really learn from and see each other's point of view. So we get a lot. We're building these media silos, I think, sometimes that are uh, becoming more and more adept at propaganda, and I mean that in a not nefarious point of view, but in a, a kind of a bias uh, point of view, where we're constantly editing and curating to make it fit our own particular belief systems without really acknowledging that it's only through the media, particularly in a world as complex and pluralistic as we live in now, that we're going to be able to find the the fabric by which we might find connectivity and common ground. Well, this is why I like working with you, because uh, you put me at ease about these things. And uh, we do have silos, but it also just marks for me the fact that we have a lot more work to do. Would you agree with that? I absolutely would agree. <laughs> and you know, it's funny, because I think, I think so many of these things are not technical problems. I mean, we obviously have the technology where people could do all sorts of things. We, it's more of a human question of how do we create a world in which it's safe to have differences and where we can restore maybe some of the uh, kind of civil uh, society and civil deportment and respect for different views as distinct from we elect a president and the next day half the population is now committed to undermining his or her leadership uh, as you know and I think anytime that occurs uh, leadership becomes more of a technical function as distinct from a human function. And it becomes about uh, negotiating a world of differences and politics becomes about negotiating uh, rather than compromise. And, and the more and more that occurs, I think, the, on one hand, I think media could be the solution to allow pluralism and to allow differences to coexist, but not if the media takes sides. You know, if the, if the media takes sides, then it's part of the polarization. Absolutely. Uh, but this is why, Jim, and, and, and this is what attracts me to this very serious work that I do right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been in television for years, but I really like this particular work because I think that, as in the old days, we need those people who are the philosophers, who are the thinkers, who can help us think about our rapidly changing world. And there is no right answer. But what I get from you is that process of thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And you're opening it up to other people. And so I just really want to thank you. And, and maybe we'll continue to talk in the future. But thanks for having me on. And um, well, I loved I, it. I, I absolutely <laughs> love the conversation. And I think this is the first of many to come. And, and uh, I, I think you are a kind of visionary in the media space. And I think if you could keep sharing your vision, uh, with so many people, and together we might be able to create this, uh, whatever this future is going to provide.